In this video, we're going to talk about the command pattern and how you can use it inside of your games to create actions that you can track over time. The easiest way to think about the command pattern is capturing an action as an object. So typically you think of doing a thing as being a method call. In this case, we're gonna wrap that inside of an object called a command, and we're going to do whatever the method is by calling execute. And in practice, what this allows us to do is because we are creating actions as objects, then we can track them. So we can have like a list of commands and each of those commands will have an action associated with them. But because they're objects, we can look at that list and we can view them. And one handy side effect of this pattern is it allows you to create command objects. We can execute whatever is part of that command and we can track them and we can actually undo the command that we just did as well. So anytime you need to track things that happened inside of your game, you may wanna consider if the command pattern might solve that problem. And in this case, you could have a command list where you can manipulate that however you need to. In practice, what this means is that each thing that you want to be a command will need to implement a common interface or an abstract base, or you're, you're gonna need some sort of abstraction. I'm going to use an interface and I'm gonna call it I command. And if something is going to implement I command, it needs to implement execute and undo. So any kind of command that we have, we need to do something when execute is called and we need to undo the thing that we just did. As one implementation of the command pattern, we're, we're gonna look at a stack and a queue. And in our stack example, this would be like tracking history. So if you think of Photoshop, the histogram or, or whatever, where you can track all the different things and you want to undo all the actions you took, then you can track all the commands that happened. If you want to add a new command, you would create it. In this case example, you'd execute it, you'd add it to the history, and then if you want to undo, you'd pull the last action, you'd undo it, and then you'd get rid of it. So now this would be your leftover history, then you could undo that one, you could undo that one, you could execute, you could add to it, and so forth. So command stack, super, super valuable. And, and especially if you're looking to implement an undo functionality, you may wanna look into this pattern. Another example of the command pattern would be using it as a queue. Now a queue is gonna be very different because the first command that you put in there is also going to be the first out. So first in, first out. And just to visualize it, you can see this here. The times where you would wanna use this is if you wanted to wait for things to happen in a sequence. So you could imagine that in a turn-based game, perhaps, um, you would put in all your actions for all your characters and you could queue those actions up in a command list and then you could in this case, it would be by the order in which they were stacked in the command, but you could actually reorder that and you know have it based off of speed stat or whatever. The point is that you're creating a list, you're calling things sequentially, and then calling the next one once that's done. Uh, you'll see this a lot in turn-based games, like digital card games and so forth. That's another way that you could implement the command pattern. And to go a little bit deeper into the code of what that would look like is you would have your I command, this is your abstraction. All commands need to implement these two methods. So we have our example command that can execute and undo. <laughs> I'm missing a little bracket there, that's fun. And you would also somewhere need your command stack. And this is gonna contain your command history. So if we create a new command stack on any class, we are giving that class access to a history of commands. And you know we'd, we'd stack these just like that. And if we want to execute a new command, you need to pass it the new command. We'd call the execute on that command and we would push it into the stack. And then if we wanna undo, we pop the, the most recent command from the stack, we'd take it, we'd undo, and we'd have whatever's left over inside the stack. So uh, visually think of a stack of cards, we're just pulling the top card or we are placing another card on the top and pulling it and doing what it says and getting rid of it. And that's one way to think about it. And in the example that we're gonna look at, we're going to manipulate a light component just using a series of commands. And we're gonna have our I command interface and we're gonna have various commands that we can affect the light with. So in this case, we have a color change. We can increase the intensity. We're just gonna keep things really simple. 
and we're going to have our light controller and our light controller is going to have access to a command stack. Now this command stack is going to have the history in it. So we'll take this and we'll use that to run any new command. So we'll say command stack dot execute blah, and then it will run that and it'll track all the previous commands. And then if we press the Z button, then we can undo. So we'll look at how we can implement that in code and have um, a series of commands that we can send to a light controller and we'll have undo functionality with that. So now we're inside of Unity. Let's take a look and see what we have. I'm gonna hit the play button. And inside of Unity, we have a series of button inputs that if we press, we can do things like toggle the light, we can increase intensity, we can decrease. If we press four, we're going to assign a random color. Um, we've created the random color from a utility script, which you can look at. But the most important thing is if we press Z, we are undoing our last command. So I am right now just undoing through everything that I've done in this demo. You'll see it just did everything in reverse order. So I'm gonna get out of there and let's take a look at, at how this works. First, the command pattern is actually extremely simple in practice and, and implementing it. All you need is a reusable script for I command and it's just an interface that has Few methods, we have an execute and we have an undo. Any new command that we make, we need a way, we need something to happen when we call execute and we need something to happen when we call undo. And we wanna do the opposite of whatever we did in execute to return it. And then we have our command stack. So our command stack is pretty similar to the um, PowerPoint code, but we have our history right here. And if we execute a new command, we need to send this instance of this class a new type of command or type of I command. So all those will have execute and undo and we will execute it and we'll push it into the history or on the stack. And if we want to undo, we just check to make sure that we're not trying to pull something from an empty stack. So we'll check, to make sure that there's something there and then we will pull it and we will call whatever it's undo function is. So pretty straightforward, you can actually reuse these scripts on your own and you never have to build, build that pattern again. You just have to implement the pattern. Let's look at a few commands. First, let's look at the light toggle. And because these are C-sharp classes, they're not mono behaviors, I need, I'm gonna put in a constructor and pass in any references I need whenever I create it. And so we're going to hold on to the light as a member variable. And inside of our execute, once we have access to the light, we're just going to say toggle the enabled state to whatever the opposite is. So we're using this not thing where it just flips it. If it's true, it'll be false. If it's false, it'll be true and um, so forth. Undo, I mean, it's, it's the same thing since we're just flipping it back and forth. So yeah, the pattern is typically pass in any reference that you need to accomplish the command, hold on to it. And then inside of execute, you do the thing. Inside of undo, you undo the thing. And that's it. Let's look at another one. Let's look at increase intensity. So our increase intensity command, we implement I command and we pass in the light and from the constructor, hold on to it. We can define an increase amount up here just to um, keep all our you know, main variables in one place. Then when we execute, we are adding our increase amount to the intensity of our light. And then we're just gonna subtract that same amount when we undo. And I mean, that's about it. You can create whatever other commands you want. I think color change is just a little bit more complicated, but just to show that you can pass in, you know, you can pass in a new color, you can pass in anything you want into the constructor, as long as the thing that's passing it in has a way to get it. So one common pattern for this would be whatever is passing in to this, commands constructor, like it's easiest to have that be a mono behavior, then you can get those through the inspector if you want, or um, that's one way to do it. So yeah, light, in this case, we're holding on to the original color so that we don't lose that and we can return to it later, but we're, we're capturing that, storing the new color, storing the new color, and then we execute, we just change it to the new color, and then we undo, we change it to the original color. We do have a color creator helper script, which is just a simple static class. Just creates a random color, pretty useful, pretty handy, and returns it. You can call this from anywhere. Nice little utility script here. 
And then to tie it all together, we have our light controller script. And just to tell you, our light controller is just on a game object, empty game object here. Our point light is right here. And our light controller gives at, um, gets a reference to our point light in the scene. And then we're just getting some inputs here or defining what keys you want on the input. And then because we have our light reference, then when we detect the key inputs, we have our command stack as well that's on our light controller. Remember, this is our this contains our history. So on our light controller, we want to send actions to affect the light. So we'll say command stack dot execute command and then give it a new command. In this case, it's a new light increase intensity. And in order to create that, remember through our constructor, we need to give it a light. And in this case, we've defined this light um, in the inspector reference right here by just dragging a light in. And we're just taking that and passing it down into the constructor of the command we're about to create. And we're doing this on all the inputs, right? So increase intensity, active toggle. In this case, for light color change, we're creating a new random color using the utility script. And then we're executing a light color change, giving it the new random color. And then to make this pattern work in this entire example, right here, undo. Whatever our undo command key is, in this case, it's gonna be Z, I believe. Just say command stack dot undo last command. That's it. I mean, super simple pattern and concept, but very, very powerful. The easiest way to think about it is capturing an action as an object. So we're creating objects out of these actions that we want to do, like changing the light, un, you know, undoing that change, whatever. We're tracking those objects in a list or a stack or a queue or whatever. And then each one can have its own execute and undo. You could do whatever you want with this. I mean, undo functionality is really cool to be able to put in your game. Um, you could imagine if you had a turn-based thing, if you select a command, but you haven't finished out your turn, you may want to undo the thing that you accidentally clicked. It's super handy to implement that. Uh, you could do an event queue if you're if you want to queue up a series of abilities and then have them fire off one by one. You could do it that way. Um, being able to capture actions as objects just opens up a whole lot of new things for you. And really, the pattern is just this. It's just two very very small base classes. It's um, a command that can execute and undo, and a stack that just pulls off a command and calls execute or undo, and that's about it. So hopefully this helps you, um, and hopefully you can think of a lot of cool uses for this pattern.